Over the last few lessons, we've managed to write a pretty good container. It allows us to add to instances, fetch those instances, and to or rather services, and also it automatically resolves dependencies. It does automatic dependency injection. One thing that we are missing right now are singletons. The singleton is a pattern that allows you to always get the same instance of a given class. So that's what we're doing right here. This is a singleton. We always get the same instance of the container. And in this case, we need this for this specific scenario because we need to always populate the, the services array, the services property on the same object. So if you're calling the container from multiple places, we need to have access to the same services or rather all services, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Most containers offer the option to register singletons and that's what we need to do here. So let's start with a test. Let's write a task called, it allows us to register singletons. This returns void. And then pretty simple, let's bind something to the container. So we wanna register something. Actually, let's call the singleton method, right? We wanna see service and we're just gonna bind our test service, right? So let's say new test service. Okay, pretty simple. And then what we wanna do is we wanna fetch this item from the container twice and assert that we're getting the same object. So we can do something like assert same, which we'll check if we're talking about the same object, and then we can just fetch it twice. So we wanna get this once, and then we wanna get this again. If we run our tests, and let's filter to, whoops, PHP unit filter, let's pass it. Oh, I forgot to add the task prefix. All right, obviously failing because we don't have the method. So let's start by creating that method, right? Uh, let's add it just below register. We want to call it singleton, and we're only going to have this method for DX purposes. So let's start by expecting a key and then a closure, which is going to be the callback. It's going to return an instance of itself. And we just want this method to be an alias. So let's just call register key callback and pass a third parameter, which is going to be whether this is supposed to be singleton. So we can add this parameter right here. And okay, let's try this again. Obviously still failing, so I already have the method, but we're still getting different instances right here. Let's see how we can tackle this. A good way to approach this, and there are multiple ways to handle this, but what we're gonna go with is we're gonna add a new property called instances. It's also going to be an array. And this instances array is going to hold resolved instances. So if you read your service and it's meant to be singleton, it is going to populate that array. At first, we're gonna use no values because we don't want to resolve all services before they're called. Think with me, let's say you register a singleton, but you don't call it on every code path, you don't call it on every class, you don't call it on every code execution. Let's say call our application, for example, you register a singleton on your service provider. You probably don't wanna resolve that instance right away. You only want to resolve it once it's called, and then if it's call again, you don't want, you just want to use the cached result, which is going to be held on this property. All right, let's run our tests. Obviously still failing. So let's go to our register method and think a little bit. So how do we know whether a service is meant to be a single tone? A couple of ways we could do this. Like I said, we could turn this into an array or a object and we could say something like, this is the value and this is whether it is a singleton, and then you could even pass an additional one called instance, which is the resolved instance, which would be no at first, but we're gonna go with something simpler. We're gonna use those two arrays. So if it is a singleton, we want to populate this instances array. We expect the key here, and it's going to be no. We don't wanna resolve it right away. Let's run it, still failing, obviously. Let's move into our get method. This is where the magic happens, right? So in the get method, we have two code paths. Um, I have three actually. The first one is when a service has been registered to the container manually. This other one is when it hasn't been registered to the container manually, but we're talking about a class, and then we can automatically resolve it, right? And the third one is if we cannot resolve it, then we throw an exception, but let's not consider that one. So for this one, we don't have to worry because if it hasn't been manually registered, it's not a singleton. You have to explicitly say that you want to register a singleton. So let's not worry about this code path. Let's focus on this one. And what we can do here is first we have this overriding, this variable, 
And the problem is once we do this, we'll lose the key. So let's rename this to, let's call it service resolver. And we want to uh, rename this. So this is supposed to be called service resolver. Let's run our tests see if they still pass. Okay, we see, well, we have a couple of tests failing. Too so few arguments register. Okay, this is supposed to be false. So we already caught a bug. By default, you're not dealing with a single token. Okay, now we only have one test failing again. Let's go back to it. All right, so this is still working as it should. How can we cache this value? The first thing is we have two returns here, right? We have an early return, and then we have this second uh, return. Let's simplify it and sort this in a variable. So we can say resolved service. It's going to be, I'm just going to inline this into a ternary if. So if it's an instance of a closure, then we want to execute the closure. So service resolver. And then if it isn't, then it's the value itself. So now we can get rid of this. Cool. And what we can do here is we can cache it. So first let's return this just so we have the old behavior. Let's run our task. Okay, we only have one failing. Now that we have the resolved service, what we can do is we can check whether we have a key for this service on the instances array. So if we dump and die service, it should be a string. It is. And what we can do is something like, for example, if the array has the key and the key would be service and the array would be instances. So if the array has the key, then we want to populate it. We want to say instances. The instance for this particular service is the resolved service, right? So let's run this. Okay. This obviously does still not work because we're not really using this anywhere. So we're caching it, but we're not using that cache. Let's run the test for this one and let's add a dump and die here just so we can see what we have on the instances array. All right. So we have a service key that has an object. So that's what we want. So what we can do is on the beginning of this code path, we can do something like if the, whoops, let me, if the array key exists, which is service, the instances array, and if it is a no, so sorry, service. So if it is a no, and the reason I'm not worrying about accessing something that might not exist is because I already checked whether it exists here. So this will short circuit. So if this evaluates to false, this won't be executed. All right. And if it exists, that means that we have a cached instance and we can just return it. So something like that. Let, let's try this. All right. That's passing. Let's see if our other tasks are passing. Okay. That's pretty cool. We got this passing. Um, can we refactor this a little bit? Probably yes. We could extract this same method. We're not going to do this on this lesson though. Let's keep it that way. So already have it working. We cache it right here. Uh, when we resolve it first, and then if we have it cached, we just use it. Now for the test, let's start adding some data providers to those tests. So we only test it with a service and then with a class that doesn't have any dependencies. One thing that we haven't covered is when we register something manually, we don't have access to the container inside this closure. I mean, we could have calling this method get instance, but most frameworks allow you to pass the container as an argument and call it from within the closure. We're going to cover this on the next lesson. On this one, let's go only with data providers. And this is more to show the power of data providers. So we're only testing with a string key, but maybe we want to test with fully qualified namespaces as well. And you might be thinking, okay, but this is going to be evaluated first anyway. Yes. So on this code, it would work, but maybe you had this on top. And then this block wouldn't be executed if we were talking about a class. So it's important to have those tests. To add a data provider, we're going to add an annotation. And we don't want any of this. What we want, though, is I don't know how to write annotations anymore. What's this? What we want here is data provider. And we can say, for example, um, singletones task provider, something like that. PHP unit will create the function for ourselves. All right. Um, let's add this right next to the task and the data provider basically is a way for you to pass a bunch of data to the same task. So it allows you to run multiple tasks within the same one. Let me show you, we can return 
an array. So let's say we want to return an array, and we want to pass, we, we want to pass arguments to the sound. So uh, we probably want the key, right? And we want the service. So we want the key, and we want the service, which is supposed to be an object or a closure. Let, let's go with a closure, okay? Closure. And we can say something like, on the first one, we want to pass service and new test service like we were doing on the test we wrote. On the second one, we want to pass the fully qualified namespace. So test service class to get the fully qualified namespace, new test service. All right. So if we go to our test real quick, we can replace this with the arguments that we have on the function now and the method. So we can see key and service. And now we are using data providers. So if we were to run the test, let's try uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, data provider methods, not static. My bad, this is PHP unit 10 stuff. So let's make it static. So we got it could not resolve class exception. This is problematic. Let's comment this out and only run the second test and see what's happening. So we're getting this error on line 69, right? And l l let's see what we're getting. So let's do a DD here. When a dump and die the service we're getting, let's run a test. We're getting service. Oh, it's because we are, um, this is still hard coded. So let's get rid of this. And the reason I like to keep those takes on the videos is so you guys can see that I also make mistakes. Um, when I have edited lessons, sometimes I cut those out and people think, hey, you always get it right. I'm like, no, I don't always get it right. I too stem up on those. So we want to get the key in both, which is dynamic. It is a string here. I mean, it's always a string, but here is an it is an arbitrary string, and here it is a fully qualified namespace. So let's rerun this. Okay, now it's passing, and you can see that although we're running one task, actually two tasks ran because it's one for each of those um, array values, and maybe we want to add a third one. So let's add a third one. Let's say some arbitrary string should return, which is also an option. And why isn't, why isn't this? Let me just clean this up a little bit. Okay. I just ran pint. Um, let's try running this now. Oh, I forgot to add, sorry, to add a comma here. This is what I want. Okay. So now we have three tests running with only one test. We only wrote one, but it, we have it running with three different set of values using data providers. And on the next few lessons, we're also going to use data providers to the other task we wrote, but not in this lesson. Let's save it for later. All right, cool. I think this is said. So now we have the ability to cache those services and in case we have a singleton to resolve that instance. Another task that we could write is, we already have it somewhere, let me check. Yeah, right here. So we already have a task that makes sure we're not getting the same instance when it isn't um, a singleton. So just so I can show you something, uh, let's run out the task, they're all passing. If we go here and we were to change singleton from false to true, the default value, let's try running this. Now we have the task failing because now we're getting the same instance for the service and we're explicitly tasking that we shouldn't on this one. So let's just revert the change, keep it false, run it, cool. It's working as it should. That's pretty much it for this lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Uh, make sure to leave a like, to leave a comment if you enjoyed this, follow me on Twitter, that kind of stuff, because it does help me a lot. All right, thank you guys, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.